Hey guys, Anthony here, Bibles and Barbells. It is Saturday, November 16th, 2019. Uh, sitting here in my um, bunker, in my garage, in my man cave, in the area where I do a lot of my studies and working out and prepping. and um, So this is the place I like to be. And today I bring a devotional uh, study that I want to put up there. Um, it's entitled, Get Out, Has America asked Jesus to leave their region. Uh, but before we get into that, it has been, we've got an Arctic blast here the last couple days. I mean, several days this week in the Charlotte, uh, North Carolina area and into South Carolina. Um, it's been in the 20s. Uh, today, it's a little bit, a little bit warmer. It's in the low 40s, I think, but extremely windy, about 20, 25 mile an hour wind. So we've got the heat around here. Uh, right next to me. Hopefully it doesn't drown out any of the sound. Uh, and so I got my um, devotional ready. We got the Word of God ready uh, to to look at in our study today. And um, so let's get to it. Again, thanks for joining me. And I want to open up uh, today. Uh, first of all, we'll, we'll open up in prayer. Um, that's always good, opening up in prayer and closing in prayer, uh, because the words I say me really mean nothing. It's, it's the words of Elohim that matter. It's the words of Jesus, Yeshua, that matter. And, um, and so we'll open up and ask uh, a blessing upon this, this study and that the word gets out, uh, that it cuts through people's hearts, maybe unbelievers out there that are watching, people that are skeptics, people that have been uh, exposed to some uh, biblical truth but have disregarded it, have put the world first, have put the satanic system that's being built in this world first, and it's been kind of drowning out. If that's been happening to you and been drowning out your, your uh, your ability to maybe pick up a Bible and, and want to look at it, uh, hopefully today that'll change and you'll, uh, Yahweh will open up your heart, open up your eyes, and you'll be able to uh, discern and understand his truth because he is calling us, each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We thank you for this day. We thank you for our nation. We thank you for this world that you've created. And Father, we just ask that your mighty hand be upon this study today. Open the eyes and minds of people today in this country, America, and around the world that are following pagan practices, that are mixing pagan practices with biblical truth and diluting your word, Father. Help us to discern that, to understand that, and to know that your word is truth. It stands when everything else falls, the rock that your your word is built upon is your son, your bane, Yeshua, whom you sent to save the world from their sin and to announce that he is the king of kings and he's coming once again. And it's in his mighty name we pray. Amen. So, I've got a couple of illustrations I want to talk about um, before we get started in the study. Uh, this one is from Victor E. Frankel, a Nazi death camp survivor. He says, Everything can be taken away from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. Second quote is from William Jones, who was an American philosopher and psychologist, um, in the mid 1800s, uh, he lived to, uh, to 1910, and he's noted as the father of American psychology, uh, graduated from Harvard Medical School. He says, whenever two people meet, there are really six people present. There is each man as he sees himself, each man as the other person sees him, and each man as he really is. Patrick Henry would write in his will, and he says this, I have now disposed of all my property to my family. There is one thing more I wish I could give them, and that is faith in Jesus Christ. 
if they had that and had not given them and I had not given them one shilling, they would have been rich. And if they had not had that and I had given them all the world, they would be poor indeed. Um, the scripture we're looking at today, my main scripture uh, that I chose, is from Mark, uh, the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 5, verse 1 through 20, the healing of a demon-possessed man. And um, I chose this uh, scripture because uh, I think it, it kind of symbolizes and, and really uh, goes with the title that I've, um, I've chose today for this devotional. And you'll see as uh, uh, we read through this um, scripture in verse 17, where the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. So let's get started and uh, let's, read, let's read God's word and um, help it to absorb into our hearts and into our minds. Uh, so Mark chapter 5 starts in verse 1. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart, broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion. He replied, For we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send him, not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off <clears throat> and reported this in the towns and in the countryside and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed in his right mind and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Verse 17 says, And then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. Was Jesus, was Jesus damaging their livelihood? I don't know. But they begged with him and pleaded for Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. He wanted to be with Messiah. Jesus did not let him, but he said, go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. The man was a witness to the power of Messiah. The others wanted to go back to the way things were. They asked Jesus to leave. They asked him to get out of their region. They wanted him out. Well, I write this devotional with a very sad heart. I know there's a coming day in America where all will look back and say to themselves, where did we go wrong? As a country, we're in a very bad place spiritually. We have so-called leaders who invoke the name of God only to get votes, to get popularity. We have other leaders who only care about power and the only thing they'll do 
And they'll do anything to seize that power. So if it involves invoking the name of God and peppering people with uh, that, they'll do it in order to seize power. We have a population, a populace that is bent on self-indulgence. Only interested in promoting self and willing to forsake everything and only care about what others think of them. We've lost our first love. What went wrong? How did we get here? Many today look at our current president, Donald Trump, and you see uh, uh, this being November 16th. So you see the news yesterday, uh, the impeachment proceedings or whatever, the charade that's going on by these so-called uh, leaders that care so much for the people, that care so much for the country, and yet they're trying to usurp a sitting president from even before he was president. But many of us look to Donald Trump to answer and solve all our problems. Can he do it? Can he bring lasting peace to America? Those that place their hope in this are only fooling ourselves or themselves and fail to see the underlying problem in America. Yes, we have a great country Still, yes, our country affords us many freedoms. Still, if you can call them freedoms, we lose more with each passing day, week, month, year. Uh, and we've given up so many in the years leading up to where we are today in 2019. Uh, yes, when we look at the rest of the world, uh, we're rich. We're mightily rich indeed, financially. Um, or most people around the world are not. Materially, we're well off. But I will show you in this devotional that we are poor, pitiful, and ripe for destruction. Destruction is headed our way. How is it, you might ask? How is destruction headed our way? We have abandoned God, Elohim, Yahweh, we have abandoned his commandments. We have abandoned his commandments as a country. His Torah, his law, as some people or most uh, Bible teachers call it, his Torah, his right rulings, his precepts, his loving instructions to his redeemed people are being abandoned and trampled upon by those in power and by Americans themselves. Um, little do we know what's headed our way by doing this. It's not very to look at it's not very difficult to look at God's commands and compare it to what we are actually doing as a nation today. And uh, you'd just be fooling yourself if you're sitting there and saying that we're following God's commandments. Um, many of our church leaders say we are no longer under God's law. God's law no longer applies. Well, I was taught that too. Uh, yet God's commands are eternal. His covenant with his people is uh, blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience. Uh, they're for our own eternal good. So how many laws uh, do we have in America? How many laws are on? How many laws do you and I follow as um, American citizens? Hundreds, maybe thousands of laws. You follow them with no problems, no questions asked. Um, but yet, uh, you'll have a pastor sitting in a pulpit and say, "The law doesn't apply to you. You have a freedom in 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 Jesus." Um, everyone needs to come to Yeshua. For salvation first for the Jew then for the Gentile that does not change however his commands and his laws still stand their right rulings they're what keeps the nation which keeps you as a redeemed people separate from the unbelieving world the light in the darkness thousands most of us follow uh, many laws because we know there are consequences if we don't follow these laws um, we're doing the very opposite of what God says in his word. 
We say we are a Christian nation, but by our actions, we deny that very statement. And if we claim to be a Christian nation, then we see ourselves, we should see ourselves as a redeemed people. Purchased by the blood of Yeshua, separate from the world, a light in the darkness. The first commandment says this in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 to 3. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. <clears throat> the Hallelujah Scriptures um, says it this way. And Elohim spoke all these words saying, I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the land of out of the house of slavery, you have no other mighty ones against my face. So that's how the um, Hallelujah Scripture says it. If we are truly a Christian nation, we need to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. We are to be set apart. Okay? We are to be dedicated to Yahweh, dedicated to his word, dedicated to what it says, dedicated to Yeshua, his son, and to follow his commands. We're to be separate from the world, depicted as Egypt, where we were taken from, slavery, and brought into freedom, redeemed by Yahweh. We were delivered from Egypt, the land of slavery, our first love should be Yahweh. His commands are not burdensome, but have power to save us from a corrupt generation and all that goes along with that corruption. You know how we say it, one nation under God. You know, we recite that if we're still allowed in many schools and, and institutions. We say it, but we do not live it. We could look or maybe forget what our Heavenly Father did for Israel. Psalm 105 depicts it uh, really well, I believe. Uh, verses 42 to 45 says this, For he remembered his holy promise given to his servant Abraham. He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they fell heir to what others had toiled for that they might keep his precepts and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And now we come to the next command, the second commandment, where Yahweh says in Exodus 20, verse 4 through 6, You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation, to those uh, who hate me, but showing love to thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. Hallelujah Scripture says it this way. You do not make for yourself a carved image of any likeness of that which is in the Shamaim above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the wickedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to thousands to those who love me and guard my commands. Many will say, uh, many of you possibly will say America doesn't have idols or worship or bow down like those nations did uh, in the past. Uh, the answer might surprise many of us uh, because it is the next item on my list that is contributing to our downfall as a nation. And this will bring fierce judgment on us, I predict. Uh, judgment that no one leader, Donald Trump's not going to be able to save us. No one president or leader is going to be able to help us. The spewing of what you hear today uh, by the left, by the right, by whoever, 
is not going to save us. Judgment is still going to head our way. Um, only a complete change of heart and national repentance may be able to stop uh, what's coming. Um, the Apostle Paul in the book of Colossians um, in chapter 3, verse 5 through 6 says, uh, and let's really listen to these words uh, that the Apostle Paul uh, says. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. America has a big problem with idolatry. Um, America has a big problem with worshiping many gods. Um, idols are anything that takes the place, that takes Elohim's place, and giving us fulfillment, satisfaction, security, significance. Many of the things that people have idolized, both past and present, are not necessarily bad things, um, but good things that take bad positions on the priority tree. Um, according to uh, what we read in the Ten Commandments, just the first two commandments, that's all we're going to look at today, um, Elohim needs to be first priority in everything we do as a nation. All our decisions, everything that we do, both nationally and individually, we should be going to Him for guidance. We should be looking to His laws, His precepts, His right ruling, His commandments first in order to live the life that He has called us for. Um, in this video, I attached a few links of what I'm going to quote here. Uh, from some articles in uh, Christianity Today, churchplants.com, and uh, activechristianity.org. Um, but basically, um, you know, you could look at how do you spend your time? We always take time for things that we are interested in. My hope is eternal life with the Father and the Son. My whole being should be focused on such a glorious future. If my eyes are really open to see that a life that is pleasing to God is what really matters, that all the temporary distractions will fade away. They will no longer have value. I should be able to say with Jesus, my kingdom is not of this earth. John 18, 36. So take a look back at your past week and ask yourself, where were my thoughts? What was I busy with? If you have an honest and pure desire to serve God, then you need to take up the battle so that your thoughts are not wandering back and forth, but that your mind is set firmly on the things above. God will bless such a heart that is holy for him, just as he blessed the Israelites when they were faithful to him. Our walk with Yeshua is a moment-by-moment -moment walk. My quote. Our walk with Yeshua is a moment-by-moment -moment walk. You don't just, um, oh, I believe in Jesus and... Uh, put them on the shelf and then do everything that you want. Operate how you want, uh, how you see what's best fit for you. And that's not how it works. Your, he's, he is your life. We are, uh, we are created by him and for him. And therefore, we must live moment by moment. When we do that, a lot of the things that entangle and bring people down will fall off like chaff. Um, but uh, this, one of these articles says, and I, I believe with this assessment, that Americans are fundamentally, fundamentally polytheists uh, with these idols in America, worshiping at shrines of the many gods. Uh, at very best, we're polytheists. We say one nation under God, which signifies one God, but we're really polytheists. Uh, and I, I, I agree with this, uh, what, what they say here. America has, uh, and this one article talks about seven most popular gods, um, not necessarily the highest loyalty, not in other words, we don't give any one of these seven gods, uh, these idols that um, they're gonna, we're going to mention here, uh, the highest authority, but we're functional polytheists. Um, uh, but our sincere and central devotion is not to one god. The question then becomes, what is our what is your or my functional pantheon? 
Uh, from a biblical perspective, such gods are really idols, idols that the Bible both denounces and mocks, like we see in the second commandment. So I'm just going to look at uh, from 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, in that order. So national security, uh, we see our, uh, and really big since 9-11, um, we were attacked, we chose to give up, give up freedoms uh, for, nas for more national security. Um, the God of nationals, we came together as a nation briefly, uh, we're going to go against terrorism, we're going to give up these freedoms, the government's going to get bigger, we're going to give them more power to keep us safe. National security is everything, that's our God. It's going to solve all our problems. Just give it all to the government. They know what to do. They know what's best for us. They'll solve our problems. Number six, money, riches, and wealth. Uh, you know, um, still a much adored and sought after God in the United States. The pursuit of wealth was one of the two founding pillars of the United States. And of course, this is still in place but is now taken for granted. So goes on question. But the worship of this God is a little less prominent. People don't even realize that they're worshiping it. Um, relationships uh, come together for money. Relationships break apart because of money, the pursuit of money. This God is also called mammon, which Jesus referred to in Matthew 6, 24, when he says, you cannot serve both God and mammon. Um, next on my list, and as a, uh, a prepper, guns. Uh, the worship of guns in the United States. Um, though the Second Amendment gives us the right of the people to keep and bear arms, I still... I'm not denouncing that right. I'm not saying that that's not the case. I'm saying that it can be unhealthy to just rely on guns is going to solve all our problems in the United States. Uh, if the government becomes tyrannical, we'll overthrow the government with our guns, we say. Uh, we cannot expect the gun to save the republic. Guns will not save us. Turning to Yahweh will save us. Turning to Yeshua, his son, will save us. Again, guns can become an unhealthy idol. The automobile can become an unhealthy idol, number four. Fame and celebrity can become an unhealthy idol, and, and you can see that. Um, um, in movies and radio and TV, the internet. Um, being famous is always better than not being. Becoming a celebrity is always something to be applauded. In this value system, seeking obscurity is dumb. Many parents uh, virtually will sacrifice anything uh, for their child to become famous. Just look at some of the shows uh, that are on TV um, and how people are raising uh, their children. <clears throat> These are two big ones that people may not realize or uh, think about it, number two and number one. Collegiate and professional sports. Uh, collegiate and professional sports, how could it become unhealthy? If you know every 